Welcome to session two. This session will focus on several forms that are found in the handbook. Look at page 22 from the handbook. We refer to this chart as the pacing schedule or calendar for the 14 plus weeks in the clinical teaching semester. This pacing schedule serves as a guide for the gradual progression of a clinical teacher towards full responsibility. It provides both clinical teachers and cooperating teachers with a suggested plan, a plan for assuming responsibility for the planning and instruction of subject areas in the elementary grades or blocks of time such as periods or classes in middle school, high school. I will thoroughly explain this pacing chart or schedule. Let's begin with the note at the bottom of the page. It's extremely important. It states that this pacing schedule is only a suggestion. It can definitely be adjusted. So, depending on the clinical teacher situation, the pace can be slower or faster. Do allow for flexibility. Each clinical teacher may have a totally different pacing schedule and that is fine. The pacing schedule can be solely determined by the cooperating teacher or it can be a joint effort where it is determined by the cooperating teacher and clinical teacher working together. It is actually the cooperating teacher's choice as to how this decision is made. Beginning with week one, the clinical teacher will observe, assist, team teach. After week one, the idea is to gradually add subjects, blocks of time, periods each week until the clinical teacher has assumed the responsibility for planning and teaching approximately half of the instructional time in any given day. Once this has happened, the one half is not to be exceeded until the clinical teacher is in full responsibility. So let me clarify the one half concept with the numbers. If, for example, there are four hours of instructional time in one day, the clinical teacher would work up to the point of being responsible for approximately two of the four hours of instructional time each day. Or if there are six periods or subjects each day, being responsible for half the day would equal three subjects or periods. Once the clinical teacher has reached the point of planning and teaching approximately one half of any given day, then before a new subject, block of time, or period is added, a subject or block of time that has been taught the longest would need to be dropped. The process of dropping before adding would continue until the clinical teacher has rotated through each subject area or block of time and been responsible for every part of the day. Now the clinical teacher is ready for full responsibility and hopefully this process of rotating the clinical teacher through all the subjects or blocks of time in a day can be accomplished by week seven at the very latest. So to clarify A&M's approach to pacing, rather than add, add, and add until a clinical teacher is in full responsibility, our approach is to add subjects or blocks of time until the clinical teacher is responsible for one half of the instructional day. At this point, we drop subjects or blocks of time as new subjects or blocks of time are added. This prevents the clinical teacher from being responsible for more than one half of the instructional day until he or she is actually in full responsibility. Scan down the pacing schedule to weeks five through seven. Full responsibility consists of 10 consecutive days. So full responsibility could either be during weeks five and six or six and seven, and it may even have to be during weeks seven and eight. The important thing is to be flexible. 10 consecutive days do not always work out due to staff development days, holidays, testing, etc. So just skip over those days and continue counting to 10. And I do want to stress 10 consecutive days if possible because even though we prefer 10 consecutive days, it is okay if in the middle of the 10 days, for example, the cooperating teacher needs a class back for a day or two of testing required by the district, that's fine. In fact, it is okay to split the full responsibility into two one-week sessions. For example, the clinical teacher could be in full week five, take week six to reflect, and then resume full responsibility with week seven. Flexibility is always important, but especially during the spring semester. Make sure though that there, there's a total of 10 days for each full responsibility, even if they are not consecutive days. The midpoint conference works, well, works out well during week seven for me personally. 
The second environment is mentioned as an option in this same box. There's more information on page five in the handbook about second environment. Second environment is simply a maximum of five days of observing in other classrooms. It could occur here after the first full responsibility or could be saved for the end of clinical teaching. It could also be scattered out over several weeks. Leave this up to the cooperating teacher and the clinical teacher because it's really their choice. Once this first full responsibility is complete, the clinical teacher drops back to being responsible for approximately one half of the instructional time each day. See weeks eight through 10 on the pacing schedule. The clinical teacher will rotate through different subjects, periods, or blocks of time as he or she prepares for the second full responsibility. Remember that second environment is still an option during this block of time. Look at the second full responsibility at the bottom of the pacing schedule. Second full responsibility consists of 10, hopefully consecutive days, during weeks 12 and 13 or weeks 13 and 14. Again, be flexible. Let the cooperating teacher determine what will work best in his or her classroom. The final conference is best conducted sometime during weeks 13 or 14. While we're looking at this pacing schedule, it's a good time to point out some ideal times for you to make your four formal observations. And you may want to jot these suggestions down. A high visit is highly suggested during the first week. Just pop in, see where the clinical teacher's desk is, where the clinical teacher will keep his or her clinical teaching notebook. And by the way, we will discuss details about the notebook in session four of this online uh, training. The first formal observation for each clinical teacher should occur during either week three or week four. The second formal observation should occur when the clinical teacher is in his or her full first full responsibility, so this could be during weeks five, six, or seven. The third formal observation will be after the midpoint conference and will occur during weeks eight, nine, or ten. The fourth formal observation should occur when the clinical teacher is in his or her second full responsibility, so this could be during weeks 11, 12, or 13. And this is important. More than four observations might be needed if the clinical teacher is experiencing difficulties. At this point, you may be wondering why the four weeks of full responsibility are split into two two-week experiences of full responsibility, and our reasons are simple. By the end of the first full responsibility, each clinical teacher is well aware of the strengths and struggles that surface during those two weeks of full responsibility. The split gives the clinical teachers time to reflect on what went well and what did not. In addition, the split provides an opportunity for the clinical teacher to observe the cooperating teacher or other teachers in the grade level. These teachers could model strategies that may solve issues that the clinical teacher encountered. It gives the cooperating teacher in particular the opportunity to model effective strategies that the clinical teacher can incorporate as he or she begins to build towards the second full responsibility. Now look at the projected pacing schedule on page 23 in the handbook. This chart provides a visual of the entire semester. It is the clinical teacher's responsibility to fill out this chart based on the decisions made from discussing the options presented on page 22. And page 22 is the pacing schedule or calendar. When this chart is filled out, you'll be able to see at a glance what the clinical teacher is teaching and when he or she is teaching it. It will clearly show which subject area the clinical teacher will assume responsibility for first, second, and so on. It can be filled out by hand or generated on the computer. The clinical teachers will be able to use this example from the handbook as a guide for composing their own charts. Now let's look at two colorful examples of projected pacing schedules. These were composed on the computer by former uh, clinical teachers. They are actually from the same semester and illustrate how different each clinical teacher's pacing schedules will be based on their individual placements. Notice the dates across the top of each chart and subjects listed down the left side of each chart for, for each of these examples. Both charts are shaded in to indicate the subjects or blocks of time where the clinical teachers will be responsible for lesson plans and instruction. A color-coded key is at the bottom of each projected schedule. 
In these examples, you're able to see beginning in week two what the clinical teacher's responsibilities are. The first and second full responsibilities show up really well. You're able to easily count to make sure that there are 10 days for each full responsibility. You're able to spot check and make sure that prior to the first full responsibility, the clinical teacher is responsible for only one half of each day. The pacing schedule should be turned into you either electronically or in a hard copy form as soon as possible, but no later than the end of the third week. The next form is uh, on page 24 in the handbook and, it, and is entitled Weekly Clinical Teaching Schedule. The clinical teachers will fill this out at the end of each week to reflect what they are responsible for teaching the following week. It can be sent to you either electronically or hand delivered as a hard copy. It's your choice. It is due to you by a certain time of your choosing each Friday evening or by noon on Saturday. Again, your choice. This means that the first weekly schedule is due to you at the end of the first week and reflects what the clinical teacher is teaching the following week, which would be week two. This same procedure is followed for each of the remaining weeks. The clinical teachers may compose an electronic replica of this chart or make hard copies of the blank chart and fill in the needed data by hand it is their choice. This weekly schedule will allow you to see at a glance what and when each clinical teacher is teaching on any given day. You will use these weekly schedules to determine your schedule of observations for each week. Now that you know the purpose of the weekly schedule and a few particulars such as when it is due, let's inspect the blank chart itself. In the row across the top of the chart, the clinical teacher will record the entire day including each subject or period with the time that subject or period is taught. Lunch, conference time, recess, etc. should all be included with times. Inside each box, there should be a brief explanation of what will be taught during that lesson or block of time. You may find this useful, uh, this information useful in determining which lessons you will observe that week. One word, a phrase, would all be appropriate. Words and phrases like test, guest speaker, movie, field trip, etc. would all indicate lessons that would not be good to observe. An empty box means that the cooperating teacher, not the clinical teacher, is responsible for that lesson or block of time. Let the clinical teachers know that there will be quite a few empty boxes during the first couple of weeks. Now let's look at a sample of a weekly schedule. It is part of the miscellaneous handouts that you assembled before viewing this session. It's colorful and has weekly clinical teaching schedule typed across the top. Notice the subjects and times across the top of the chart. There is a color-coded key at the bottom. Vertical columns are used for non-teaching parts of the day such as lunch, conference period, recess, etc. Here's a suggestion which you readily see in this example. Have the uh, clinical teachers highlight in different colors information that you decide would be helpful on the weekly schedule. Notice in this example, the lessons that would be good for me to observe are highlighted. They happen to be blue in this example. An interruption to the normal schedule, which in this case is Motor Lab on Monday and Friday, is highlighted in orange. In this example, the lessons that are taught by the clinical teacher at a time different than the time recorded at the top of the column have the correct times typed inside of the proper boxes and are highlighted in yellow. Note the six boxes on Wednesday where this occurs. In summary, I have my clinical teachers highlight three things on their weekly schedules. First, they highlight lessons that they think would be good for me to observe. Second, in a different color, they highlight anything that interrupts the normal schedule, such as library, counselor, assembly, grade level testing or dis district testing, etc. This ensures that the interruption to the normal schedule just jumps out at me. Finally, if they're teaching at a time that is different than the time recorded at the top of the column, I have them record the time they are teaching inside the proper box and highlight it. 
For example, they only may be teaching the last 45 minutes of a period that is 90 minutes long. I need to know that so I will show up at the right time. Remember that this is what works for me. It, all of it is, is only a suggestion. I do, however, highly recommend sharing examples such as the projected pacing schedule and weekly schedule with your clinical teachers. A visual is generally very helpful for the clinical teachers. Here's one final suggestion. It is a good idea to have your clinical teachers let you know when there are changes to their weekly schedules so that you will not show up at a time when they are no longer teaching. This concludes session two.